fourth finger, an important finger as far as those cross unders and crossovers go, yes? So we're going to start there. Practicing its cross under in relation to the thumb, but not just with two adjacent strings. We'll do it at the interval of a third, the way you would find in an arpeggio, and the interval of a fourth as well. Do your best to keep your thumb upright. Keep your thumb mobile. Make it close over your second finger. Keep your hand centered. This is not easy, but I urge you to give it a try anyway and see what your fourth finger can do. Because the more solid your fourth finger can be in a situation like that, the better your arpeggios will be when you need them and your scales. So that's important, right? I think so. Okay, so we have that. Now we're going to have your fourth finger work with your third finger. Haha. <laughs> Similar to the drill you did last week with two and three, we're going to do the same drill with three and four. What you might find more difficult here is to make your fingers coordinate so they actually play at the same time, but it's pretty critical. Keep those fingers, oops, that wasn't very clean. That's a little bit better. Keep your fingers arched. Make sure that they close. Make sure that they place securely and stay relaxed. Have I given you enough to do? Take your time with it. This is a workout for your third finger too. And there's a strange thing that happens in this drill. You might find your thumb tensing up, trying to, it wants to get in on the act, it wants to help control. If you, it can stick up in the air if that will keep it relaxed. If not, just let it rest lightly by that second finger this way. Just remember to take all the tension out of your hand before you play. Okay. You will find this kind of challenging to have it sound good, but it's really effective for developing some of that control in your fourth finger and your third finger. So give it a shot.